Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and welcome to this latest uh, Chassis Sim video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks to help you create a circuit model and really just some, some insights into how you can better dial this model, uh, how you can better dial in your circuit model in and just some things that we have found that are um, very, very useful. Now, there are some previous video tutorials that um, we've done that that outlines the mechanics of how to create a curvature file, how to create a bump profile, how to go about uh, manipulating grip scale factors, bump scale factors, and how to, uh, how to uh, put together an altitude road camber file. But the goal of this tutorial is to show you how to bring these different elements together because one of the things that we have been finding in the chassis sim community is that there are some people out there who are very, very good at running the mechanics of chassis sim but where they sort of struggle a little bit is to is where to connect the dots and really the whole point of this tutorial is to show you where to connect the dots with regards to making a circuit model so without um, uh, uh, so without further ado let's get started What I'd like to talk to you about is before we go into the mechanics of driving chassis sim, I just want to do a little bit of ground school first about what constitutes a um, uh, about what constitutes a um, uh, circuit model and just some uh, and uh, just some ideas on where these all play uh, where these all play in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through some ground school first, and then what I'm going to do is to um, walk you through a practical example of how to put this together. Now, in chassis sim, there are four distinct elements to um, the circuit file. The first is the curvature file. Now the curvature file is basically the, tra the trajectory the car is going to follow around the circuit. The next file is the bump profile. This is basically a plot of all four road surface displacement versus distance. The third element is the road camber altitude file. Now this basically plots altitude variation over the circuit. It also plots uh, it, uh, it also um, plots Road, uh, uh, road, camber ver uh, road camber variation. The last element is grip and bump scale factors that allow you to tune in local um, grip scale um, factor variation. Now, if you're ever in a rush and you've got to get out something real quick, you can get away with just a curvature and a bump profile. It's not ideal, but if you're caught between a rock and a hard place, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good start. Now, in terms of constructing the curvature file, there are a number of uh, 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 there are uh, 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 there are a number of ways that um, you can go about this. You can create a dedicated math channel to it, or you just use the monster file um, import system. But bottom line, what you want is a filtered plot of inverse corner radius versus distance, where inverse corner radius is one on meters and track distance is in meters. Also, too really good thing to uh, make sure make and I've talked about this in the monster file tutorial as well make sure you've got distance in meters to at least two decimal places the next thing I want to talk to you about is the bump profile now real trap for young players here just remember what you're constructing in the bump profile is an input it's the it's basically the road surface input that we're after here don't go straight off your damper uh, plots. One of the biggest traps I see in this business is people take one look at their dampers and uh, their, dam uh, their damper plots and go, that's our input. Uh-uh, it's an output and be very, very mindful of that. So consequently, you've got to use tools such as the chassis and bump profile toolbox to help you out. If once again, if you stalk, if you caught, uh, if you're uh, uh, caught between a rock and a hard place, one thing you can do is take the monster file, just take the damper inputs, and take um, the distance input, and basically applying a damper scaling factor of about say maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3. But that's uh, uh, but that's a, a quick and dirty trick that can, that uh, particularly um, people using chassis sim light can use if you don't have the bump profile toolbox. The next element I want to talk to you about is the road camber and altitude variation. Now, this plots camber angle of the road and track elevation. Now, 
this is really, really now this is really important particularly if you're dealing with corners with significant road camber uh, variation and that's really a big lesson that we in the uh, that um, uh, that uh, the oval users in the chassis community taught me in particular now the reason it's so important is it has, particularly road camper, has a huge impact on tire loads. So it's something very, very important to keep in mind. Now, another thing um, to keep in mind is how do we get this information? We can get it from GPS data. Um, and alternatively, we can either uh, use, uh, if, we're, if we're really caught between a rock and a hard place, we can use toolboxes um, to, uh, uh, we can use um, uh, the, Auto camber, uh, the auto road camber uh, toolbox to give you a hand, uh, to give you a hand with it. Now, running and refining your first simulation, create your curvature and bump profile first. You do your initial run, and then if you're starting to get big speed variations, the order I work down is altitude road camber, bump scale, then I do grip scale factor last. Now. The telltale signs that you need to start playing with um, altitude road uh, with um, altitude road camber is if you're getting big speed variations with big differences in the damper plots. That is almost like an automatic go-to to start playing with um, uh, with ro uh, uh, with uh, 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 with road camber. In terms of where you need to add variable group fa uh, uh, factors. The first thing you do is you look at the speed comparison. Now, if you're looking at a situation like we have in this plot here, where we have a big speed difference and the damper and the damper traces are very equivalent, that's all. Uh, like in this particular example, there was like a 20k an hour difference in the speed. If you if the dam if um, uh, the damper um, displacements are very similar, that's almost an automatic go-to to start looking at bump scale factor. So be very very mindful that if you see something like that. That's almost an immediate go to start looking at some um, uh, bump scale factor. If you've got a situation where the bumps aren't as big, but you still have a bit of a speed corner uh, uh, difference, that's where you need to start um, uh, going in um, with, uh, with variable grip factor. And a very useful tool I find is for tuning in grip factor is that um, for auto uh, for local grip factors, I find that um, V actual on V sim squared for the grip factor is a pretty good rough rule of thumb. So basically to review, basically your order of operation is you construct the curvature file first, you look at the bump scale, uh, 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 you then um, construct the bump scale factor, add those two in, do your initial simulation. You then, if you've got differences in uh, the speed, you look at road camber and altitude variation first. We then look at bump scale factor. Then last on the list is uh, is um, is um, uh, grip scale. Okay, that's the theory. Let's now take a look at a practical example. Now, one thing that obviously uh, uh, one thing that uh, you um, obviously need to do first is construct a monster file. Now. One exam. Uh, um, uh, one exam. Uh, now, what I've done here is just to permit me to do a little bit of basic chassis sim housekeeping first. What I like to do when I'm constructing a circuit model for the first time, what I like to do is I'd like to put it in a models directory. And as you can see here, I've got it in a models directory. I've got V8 supercar and I'm looking at the Phillip Island circuit. So what I've cre created is a directory structure that reflects that. So I've got models, what the model is, a V8 supercar and a, and a Phillip Island. You can see here that I've got my uh, that I've got my V8 supercar uh, car file that represents uh, Phillip Island and um, and has that particular setup represented in that car file. But you'll also see here that I've put the monster file in the same directory as I've put my car file in. That's for a very good reason because when I start generating things like bump profiles tire force optimizations, etc., etc., and aero, um, and uh, when I start running the aero toolbox, it will always dump these files in the same directory as the car file. So I find this a very, very good housekeeping thing, just to keep things, um, uh, uh, just to keep things in track. And you'll see here that 
I've already uh, I've already generated a curvature and a bump profile, and I've liked to keep this all in the same directory. So I've just got everything to hand now. So I've got every uh, so I've got everything I need to hand now. The first thing I do is that I go to once I've created my um, monster file, I'll go to create filter curvature file. I'll go to import my monster file. And obviously, I'll click here review uh, with using my monster file, and I'll make sure I've got that set to the frequency of the monster file, which is 50 hertz. Now, not to sort of go over what I did um, in a previous tutorial on generating curvature files, but you see here you've got two options. You've got a moving average filter and a frequency filter. If you're pretty confident that you've got a good uh, that you've got a good lateral G sensor. I would probably recommend that uh, you can use the frequency filter set at about 0.5 of a second. That being said, if, you, if either the lateral accelerometer is coming straight from the data logging box, or you're probably just a little bit suspect about where that uh, lateral G si signal is coming from, the moving average filter is a pretty good thing to use. And once again, you click on here for the output curvature file, as you can see, I've already generated it, but I'll just select it again. You click on OK, that generates it. Now, just as a quick sanity check, I always go to Edit Variable Grip Factors and just load that Phillip Island file, and I'll just load that curvature file up to make sure that it actually looks like my circuit. And as you can see here, it's a pretty good representation. My next step is then I'll generate the bump profile. So I'll go to Bump Profile Modeling. I'll click here to add my monster import file. Now, let me just walk you through a couple of settings that um, are useful for you to keep your eye on. First things first, I make sure that um, I input the fact that I'm zeroed on the ground. Um, so I put that in. The next thing I'll do is I'll put in my maximum bump and my maximum droop value. This basically clips the road value input just in case things go a little bit crazy. Another thing that I uh, uh, that I pay a lot of attention to is basically your ma your maximum bump rate. Now, this is a V8 supercar; it's going to get bashed around a bit. I typically tend to use for touring cars around about 0.4 of a meter per second. Open wheelers, 0.2 of a meter per second. Uh, GT cars tends to be about 0.3 uh, about 0.3 of a meter per second. So, when I'm happy, I just click on create bump profile, click on OK and I let it do its thing. Now, once I let it do its thing, and I've already pre-run this um, uh, simulation, but what I'll do is um, when it's finished creating the bump profile, I'll go into bump profile, I'll just open with notepad, and I'll just take a quick look sanity check just to make sure it looks sensible, which in this case, it does. What we're looking for is either if the distances have gone mad, which is this fifth column here, or if um, the bumps have, uh, the bumps have clipped out. The thing about it is, 99 times out of 100, you're not even going to need to bother doing this, but I like to do this just for completeness anyway. So what I do is I just go to circuit, circuit data, I load in my curvature file, I click on my bump profile, and I click on my star.dat file, and I click on my bump profile, load that in, click on OK, and I'm good to go. Now, I've already run this up, and let me just show you just a quick sim. Uh, uh, let me just show you a uh, quick simula uh, uh, a quick result of the simulation. I'm just going to go into my gear analysis tab. Now here, it's doing about 210k an hour for turn one, about 128 for turn two, and the lap time is uh, and the lap time is just a bit optimistic. It's about an 88 second lap that I've got here. In reality, you're doing about 90s, 91s, 92s around uh, Phillip Island. Now, if I'm ever in a situation where the lap time is way over optimistic, my first go-to here is that I'll tend to click on the tire grip, uh, 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 grip, uh, uh, grip factors, and I will change that to about 0.9, and 0.9, about 0.9, and then I will, and then I tend to, um, and then I will rerun this, and I will then rerun the simulation. Now, for the purposes of brevity, I'm not going to go through that right now, but that's a sort of just a little bit of a rough rule of thumb. If my speeds are, de uh, just going back to the simulated results, if my speeds are down every, 
everywhere. My tire force grip factor is almost one of those first go tos that I uh, uh, that I'll pull to. Now, if I'm dealing with a situation um, where the uh, where the overall speeds are in the ballpark, but I'm looking at uh, sir, and I'm looking at a few speed uh, a few corners that are a little bit off. Once again. I go through grip. Uh, uh, I go through my checklist. Road camber, bump scar factor, grip scar factor last. Now, in this particular uh, uh, in this particular turn, turn two here is a little bit over optimistic. Now, my first go to here is to base it, uh, My first go to here is to go to YouTube and watch an in-car camera uh, in-car camera footage of a car going around my circuit of interest. And particularly for a turn like this, where uh, here we've got a mid corner of about 128, 128, 29 kilometers per hour, but in reality, you're going through about 113, 114 K an hour. That is a classic case that we probably need to tune a little bit of road camper. So my go-to here is I'll go into my uh, I'll go into my edit uh, road camper, load in my curvature file, cycle to um, my uh, 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 cycle to um, the turn of interest, which is here, and then I basically start to manipulate that. Now for brevity, I'm not going to go through this right now, but typically what I will do this is basically my first port of call, and then what I do is that I will load in. My, uh, I will then go into circuit data, load in my altitude camber file, I'll rerun it, then I'll go back and have a look at my simulated results and see what happens. Once I'm at this point, then I start playing with um, uh, grip scale factors and bump scale factors. Okay, if we need to do, uh, uh, if we need to do this, I'm going to show you a really good little shortcut. If you go to circuit, edit variable grip factors, and go import circuit files from circuit data. You just click on that. That's automatically going to import your curvature and bump profile. Now, on a previous tutorial, I've gone through the mechanics of driving this, but let me just show you a little party trick that you can do here. If you click on generate variable grip factors, and we'll just call this grip factor Phillip Island, and we click on bump scar factor, and I'm just going to leave this as a text file for the time being, bump scar factor. Phillip Island and click on open and I click on OK, that will actually generate the grip scale factor. Now to, uh, now, to quote the Joker from the Dark Knight, I'm going to show you a little bit of a magic trick. If I go into Microsoft Excel, what I can do is I can click on Microsoft Excel, I'll go to my computer, I'll go to local disk C, I'll go to chassis sim, I'll navigate to where I have this um, uh, where I have this stored, just chassis in version 2.8, models, V8 supercar, Phillip Island, and if I go to all files, you'll see here I can click on Grip Factor Phillip Island, click on open, go next, go space, click on next. You can see very clearly that I have my Grip Scale Factor file here. Take a look. This is grip scale, this is track distance. So all I need to do is to go into I2, look at where I need to tune my distances, which in this case is 1045, go back to my Excel document, go down to that particular distance, and I can manipulate it manually. Now, you're still free to manipulate it within chassis sim, that's perfectly okay, but this is also another um, bow to your arrow that um, you can uh, use as well. So what uh, now in terms of some rough rules of thumb for when to go in and use grip scale factors and just some reflections on this. As I said before, going back to like this and there's a big discrepancy in the corner speeds, that's usually your foot that's your sort of go to to use um to play with bump scale factors. If the bump scale, uh, um, if the bump scale factors, uh, if the bumps aren't as big and you've got a, uh, and you've got differences in corner speeds, that's when you go for grip scale factor. However, let me sort of temper that with 
a little bit of an observation. I had a, um, a, a colleague and a, custo a good colleague and customer of mine who was um, tuning at um, who was uh, tuning a chassis model at um, the Sebring circuit in Florida, and he made a very telling observation to me. You will get some circuits like. Sebring in Florida is a classic example of this because the circuit is a complete dog's breakfast because of the fact that you've got different levels of concrete, they're all over the place, it's bumpy, etc, etc. And one of the things that he did was he actually used the grips, the bump scar factors to dial in bumps and then he used grip scar factors to basically dial in the cornering speeds because he was very, very interested in just looking at basically what uh, the dampers were do, uh, uh, he was more interested in seeing what the dampers were doing so he could really tune in what he needed from his ride height bump rubber and damper package and that actually worked really really well uh, for, uh, and that actually worked really really well for him so once again it's horses for courses and it's also one of the reasons why in the chassis sim community we haven't gone to the whole auto grip scaling factor f thing just yet on the simple principle that it may make you look like a hero, but sometimes, even though perfect speed correlation may make you look like a hero to team manager, uh, team management, uh, and uh, the driver, sometimes it can miss very, very important information. So once again, at the end of the day, you've really got to use your head. So in review, I'll go. Uh, uh, so in review, you go the curvature file first, construct the bump profile look for where the speed variations are and then you work through this list altitude road camber bump scale factor and then finally you move into grip scale fa uh, and then finally you, you move into grip scale factor once again tempered with what i just said if obviously you're dealing with something that's massively quicker everywhere or massively slower everywhere obviously your first go to before obviously altitude road camber is to tune in is um, to tune in is to tune in parameters such as your tire force group factor uh, uh, group factor first. Then you start working through where the corner speed uh, where the corner speeds are different. So for those chassis sim users out there, give this a run, and you'll find that in next to no time you're going to become uh, 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 that you uh, that uh, you'll achieve mastery of this in no time.